Here we go. Oh, check it out. What kind of BMS is that? Is that a dally? Hey everybody, got a battery review video for you today and a teardown. If you haven't seen the channel or if you have and forgot, I love batteries and energy storage. Batteries, energy storage, and solar power are vital to continued operation of the off Mountain Homestead. Without these batteries, I couldn't keep the lights on at night. I'm always trying to find a good quality bargain battery to share with you because if you're like me, I like to find a good deal on a quality product. So I'm going to see if this Solar Edge X battery fits the bill. And I always run these batteries for a few weeks before I bring you a video so I can share the good and the bad on any product. And if you've seen my previous videos, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I've already ran this battery already. So you can see we pulled around 130 amps on the DC side. So today I'm gonna give you the final review on this battery and do a tear down, inspect the internal build quality and see if it's worth the money. So as you can see, it's supposed to be a mini battery. Let me change your position here. And it's got some unique uh, top posts that are across from each other. So your standard side by side post. So let me get you some dimensions on this mini battery. It is 10 and a quarter wide at the widest point. seven inches deep and then the height on it is roughly nine and three quarters tall and another unique thing about this solar edge x mini is it's unrestricted in its mounting position so you can mount it any direction that you want convenient carry handle comes with top post bolts and caps now one thing about the mini claim on this I don't know if I'd necessarily call that a mini. I don't know. Maybe maybe it is mini because there's a, a mini from another brand to kind of give you a size comparison. And then this is a Group 31 BCI battery case here. So you can kind of kind of see the difference. It's kind of like a little bit of a wonky. It's like a Group 24, but it's a little taller than a Group 24. So it's got a unique size. But I gave you the dimensions. So if it's, you know, see if that'll fit your application. It's quick specs. Before I do the full teardown, supposed to have grade A sales in this unit. Overcharge protection, overcurrent protection, over discharge, short circuit, high temp protection, low temp protection. It's series capable, so you can build them 48 volt packs with it. It weighs 22 pounds. Manufacturers claiming a lifespan of over 10 years and 4,000 to 15,000 cycles depending on your daily depth of discharge. Now, one thing I have noticed with this battery compared to some of the other 100 amp hour batteries, this one gets some more severe voltage droop above 80 amps. I know I've pushed this one past its capabilities, but still, it droops at a lower amperage than other 100 amp hours. So I'm kind of curious to the wire size and the connections on the inside of this battery. All right, time for the teardown. One more last look at her before it's cracked open. It's still sealed. Won't be like that for long. So let me bust it loose. We'll check it out. All right, I saved the last little bit of glue just for you. It smells like power. I'll get it off. There we go. Oh, check it out. What kind of BMS is that? Is that a dally? No, I don't know. Let's get a little closer look at that. Reposition you here. Look at what kind of specs we got on this. 100 amp BMS. Common port. Looks just like a dally BMS. I'm going to look up these numbers real quick. Hold on. All right, couldn't find any information with a quick search on this BMS. And then the wire size, we got a seven gauge, 200 degree jacketed uh, wire for the positive. And then the negative appears to be a little larger. Looks like a six. Let me verify that for you. Six gauge uh, negative, 200 degree jacket. Uh, that is the smallest, by the way, that is the smallest positively I've seen on a 100 amp hour battery. So just letting you know. But everything is assembled nicely. Uh, here's the temperature sensor right here. Uh, so check that as soon as I get it tore apart. So I'll move everything out of the way, go further into it. All the wire connections are hydraulically crimped, tan coated copper wire. I've got it broke loose enough now that I can pull this cover and stuff off. 
and we can get down to the low temp sensor all that good stuff so let me finagle it just a little bit more should have it there we go all right finally got the temp sensor out i can't get those cells broke loose they must be have the snot glued out of them but there's where the temperature sensor set in this super dense foam board this is serious high density foam so the temp sensor was wedged down in there in this foam so i got that out so now we can do the low temp high temp cutout test Before i do the low temp test i just want to show you the solder connection on this board on the bms it has two two heat sinks top and bottom and there is a thermal switch under there too so it's got a high temp thermal switch in the bms and then this sensor should do high and low temp for the pack as well so get my ice pack and stuff and we'll test it out all right got it charging here's the sensor right there i've got my colder than ice ice pack so let's check the low temp cutoff first watch over here and if the low temp cutout works it should disconnect and you'll see the amperage right there drop out All right, that's two minutes and the ice pack didn't do it. My hands can't take it no more. That come out of a negative five degree freezer too. So the ice pack didn't shut it down. So maybe they got a lower trigger point in the BMS, something like that. So got a little bit of this stuff right here. Let's see if that works. So watch the amps on the charger over there. So if it's got low temp, this should make it shut off right here. All right, that should do it. There it went. Alrighty, she just wanted to be, need to be a little bit colder to get it to go. So no charging, it shut off, warm it up, right back to charging. All right, now I wanna check the high temp on this sensor right here. That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. Cool it off. Should start charging again. Cool off. There we go. Back in business. It's a uh, prismatic packs. There's of course four cells in here, and it's both all bolted connections. I could look under this cover right here. I can't get the camera down there to look, but it's got aluminum bus bars down through here. Everything's bolted. Everything looks nice. You know, decent quality pack, it appears. Uh, glued down, it's wrapped with fiber tape, a lot, lot of compression on fiber tapes all the way down the sides. And I pulled, cut a little spot in the cover right here to see if I could find a QR code. So I found this QR code right here. Well, upon closer inspection, I noticed the QR codes were defaced or scratched off in this unit. What does that tell me? Well, they could have been repurposed packs. It could have been a manufacturer's tracking QR code. So I asked the manufacturer and see what they have to say about it. As long as the battery performs, I'm not too much worried about that. But if you are, just be aware that this particular model here has a defaced QR code. So I hope this helps you understand how the Solar Edge X lithium iron phosphate mini battery is built. It's not bad. It really isn't. Um, I wouldn't be too awful concerned about the scratches on the QR code. Uh, that's That happens. I've seen that on other batteries. Does it concern me due to the overall quality build on this unit? But the, the biggest attractor to me for this unit is this seven gauge lead here for the positive. Now we've got sixes over here and this is a seven and every other 100 amp hour battery I've tested has a minimum of six. So why they derated this one to a seven gauge, I don't know. The low temp's a little slow to react. Um, didn't really do anything on the ice pack after two minutes, but could be the programming in this BMS. They're just trying to be transparent and let you know what you're getting when you buy something like this. And speaking of, this battery right here is $169.99 at time of filming on Amazon. So is it worth that for the detractors? I don't know. You have to be the judge of that for yourself. Um, am I scared of it? No. Would I run it? 100 at 100 amps with that number seven continuously mm, probably not but hey 
I'm going to test it some more. I'll keep you updated on anything that occurs with it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope I earned a like from you. Questions, put in the comment section. If you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate the subscription. Thank you for watching the Off-Grid Mountain Homestead. Till next time, I bet her the grid don't go. Y'all have a good day.